Howdy and welcome to a plugin showcase for the Rapier physics engine. Rapier is a general purpose physics engine written in Rust and supports many uses beyond Bevy in games. They do, however, have an officially supported Bevy plugin, which is what we'll be looking at today. There's a lot to cover of Rapier, and this will just be a broad overview, and I recommend reading their manual if you want to apply any specific feature to your games. To get our project set up, I'm going to follow the instructions on their Getting Started page. This lists out some of the various features of the library, which can boost performance and many other things. Rapier separates 2D and 3D in a very nice way. For this video, I'm going to use the 2D variant, which will let us pass things like rotations as a single float. The 3D versions of everything in this video work exactly the same way, but the extra degree of freedom makes some arguments a bit more complex, but it also adds some more functionality specific to 3D worlds. All I want to add to my TOML is the most recent 2D version of Rapier, and I want to use the SIMD instructions in parallel processing. I haven't profiled how much these help, but they sound like good features to me. I'm also going to use the debug renderer for this entire video, which will show colored outlines for all of our colliders. I'm also going to use the eGUI inspector, which has a specific integration for Rapier. As we'll see, this isn't perfect yet, but it'll give us more info than we would otherwise have. Now in main, we're going to create a normal Bevy app and add the Rapier plugin, which lets us set the specific scale we want the world to be in. Rapier recommends using real world metric units, and I agree this makes things easier to ration about. Let's also add the Rapier debug plugin, which draws our outlines, and the inspector and its Rapier integration plugin. Finally, I'll set up just a normal camera and we're ready to start using physics. First, I'll spawn a simple bouncing ball scene exactly like the Rapier guide recommends. To create our ground, all I need to do is spawn an entity with a collider. Colliders can take many shapes and the docs show us all of these with a nice graphic explaining their parameters. For the ground, I just want a rectangle and this is created using a cuboid and is specified by its half extents, not its full width and height. By default, collider entities will just be fixed hitboxes, which is exactly what we want for the ground. Next, let's create a ball. Here the collider shape will be a ball, obviously, and we set the radius. Now we want our ball to move according to the physics engine, so we add a dynamic rigid body component to it. Rigid bodies can be dynamic, which will let the engine control them, fixed, which will ignore forces like our ground does, or kinematic, which lets us control them and prevents them from being affected by outside forces. For kinematic bodies, we can choose to have them controlled by their position or their velocity based on how we plan to use them. Kinematic bodies can impart forces onto dynamic ones. Finally for the ball, let's add a restitution component, which will control how bouncy it is. Values over 1 will make the ball bounce higher than its initial height, and less than 1 but greater than 0 will make it slowly lose energy as it bounces. Now in game, we see the ball falls, bounces, and comes to a stop. When the ball stops, notice how its hitbox becomes a dark purple. This indicates that the body is asleep, which lets Rapier reduce the time spent processing this body, and is a great performance optimization. In the inspector, we can modify the collider shapes and parameters, as well as the restitution we set. However, other things, like the rigid body handle, have nothing we can edit live. As versions go on, I expect we'll get more and more control from the inspector, but for now it's just nice to be able to change anything at runtime. The observant among you might be wondering how all of this works right now. We don't have any components on the ball indicating its velocity, and yet it seems to be holding data in between frames outside of the ECS. This is all handled by the magic component called Rapier Rigid Body Handle. If we follow this rabbit hole for a minute, we'll find that we can get the underlying rigid body from the Rapier context, which is created and managed by its plugin. We'll come back to this context in a bit, but for now let's just get the body from the handle. Finding our way to this from the docs is a bit difficult because the rigid body component hides this strut, but using the non-bevy Rapier docs we can see it. I wouldn't recommend doing anything with this, but it's nice to know where the magic comes from. In this strut, we see the rigid body velocity, which explains the behavior we were seeing earlier. All the components we add using the Bevy interface to Rapier are just a thin layer over the actual physics engine. Rapier is still handling all of its processing in its own way, and it's maintaining its own physics world, and it just copies the data to and from our Bevy components. Just because we don't add a velocity component to an entity doesn't mean it doesn't have a velocity. This might break some of what you'd expect as normal behavior in the Bevy ECS, but eventually you'll learn to get used to this. If we add the velocity component to our ball now, we can see the velocity and edit it in the inspector. 
We can also control it from systems exactly how you'd expect. Next, let's look at making a character in Rapier. Thankfully, they have a custom component called Kinematic Character Controller. This has its own chapter in the guide and can be used for more than just a player. The example they give is a moving platform. To try this out in our game, let's create an entity with a collider and the character controller. I'm going to set the mass to 10 just so it's easier to kick our existing ball around. The character controller has many settings on it that control how it slides around on the floor and the maximum slope and step height. Overall, it's pretty robust and is a good starting point for making a character. If you need to customize things, you can see the source code in the plugin to see how it's implemented and how to rework them yourself. A big setting to note in my experience is to filter flags. You probably want to set this to filter out collisions with sensors, because by default sensors will block your character's movement. To move the character, I'm just going to set up a standard input handling system, and to use the character controller, we just set the translation on it every frame. This will attempt to move the character by the given translation while taking things like hitboxes and slopes into account. We can also query for the output of the character controller to see if things like the character is currently grounded, any collisions it's making, or if the previous movement was successful. Now when we play the game, we can move the player around, the ground will block our character, and we can interact with the ball. Notice that if we have a velocity component on the ball, then it really doesn't seem to be pushable by our player. Removing the component fixes this and illustrates one of my major problems with Rapier. It's very fragile and sometimes apparently meaningless changes will cause things to just not work. Basically everything I try to do with Rapier involves a bit of trial and error and I guess that's just part of working with such a young physics engine. When removing the character, notice how it slides gently around on the ground, but whenever we go up against a wall it gets stuck and doesn't slide. This is because of how the up vector is set on the character controller and I haven't found a great way to set it to zero for top-down games. My workaround for this is just to call move shape myself and give it different directions each time and then combine the resulting movement vector. This actually smoothly brings us into using the Rapier context. This is a resource that gives us total access to the physics world. This is what you want to look at for things like casting a ray or a shape, as well as calling the move shape function which gives us the same kind of interface that setting translation on the player did. This even gives us a callback for every collision, which I've used in my own games to write bevy events based on what the character collides with. While we're talking about the context, let's also quickly talk about how the docs are organized outside of the user manual. We have a couple of modules here that I'll quickly cover. Control contains all of the components related to the character controller and move shape function. Dynamics contains all of the components you might want to add to your rigid bodies to enable things like continuous collisions or to apply forces. It also contains the joint builders. Geometry contains the colliders as well as some weird things like friction and restitution. Another notable thing here is the sensor marker component. This lets you set hitboxes for things like door triggers and pickups that shouldn't impart forces on things or block player movement. Finally, plugin just has some basic setting struts which will let you control things like gravity. Everything else I would consider advanced features that I'm not going to cover in this video. It's worth mentioning that under the hood of all of this is N-Algebra, which often uses more formal names for the mathematical constructs. You might notice that a lot of the functions inside Rapier use these types, but there's a nice integration with the more user-friendly types common to Bevy. For example, the type real can be created from any floating point number. It shouldn't really come up, but it can be intimidating when you first see these types, so just be aware that there is this translation layer. The last thing I'm going to mention is joints. These let us connect two objects in a constrained way. Rapier offers many types of joints and a reduced set are available in 2D because there is one less degree of freedom intrinsic to 2D. To use joints, we'll create a joint builder for the joint we want to use, then following the builder pattern we can set things like anchor, target orientation, and a motor. Here I'm going to set anchor 1 to be above the parent object and make a smaller offset for anchor 2. I'm also going to set a motor trying to spin the joint. Now, when we spawn the parent, I'm going to just make it a fixed rectangle, and then I'll spawn a child entity which will be a dynamic rectangle. Now all we need to do is add the joint component to the child and give it the parent entity and the joint builder we created. In game we can see blue links showing the two anchor offsets we set and the cube rotating around thanks to our motor. If we move our player around we can interact with the joint and see how the motor tries to bring the cube up to the target velocity. This has just been a brief overview of some of the basic parts of Rapier. This is a big and powerful tool for getting physics into your games, and there's obviously too much to cover in one video.
I hope this gave you an overview of the basics of how to use the library and what it can offer you and your games. As always, please remember to like and subscribe, and a huge thank you to my Patreons. I really appreciate the support, and thank you for watching.